I think uh, I just love great college environments, and I thought Blacksburg and Virginia Tech was one of the best I've been around. Uh, their defensive line had a reputation of being uh, one of the best in the country this year, and in our opinion, uh, more importantly, our players' opinions and our line coach, and, and obviously mine, I think they were. Um, and it took us a while to get uh, get things organized. Uh, they, were, they changed up. I also think their defensive coaching staff, you know, has a great reputation after playing them two years in a row. It's well deserved. Uh, they fit their personnel. You know, not that this is about them, but um, I just think it's. And I told our coaches that when it, when you hear that you have a system and you have to go recruit players to fit the system, in my opinion, that's not a good football coach. You fit your system around what you have, and they got real twitched up, not real big, but they're real fast. And if you really watch that film closely, like real fast. I thought our guys played well. They hit us on two throwbacks, which uh, obviously two well executed plays, and. Uh, and we put our, you know, the fumble, fumbled uh, punt right before half really hurt us a little bit. But the positives when you have to regroup and come out after halftime and with the, with the losing the lead and then the, the crowd the way they were at that point in time, I think at the long run it's going to be good uh, for our team to watch them fight through that. Champions on offense were our captain, Taylor Decker. Champions mean they grade a champion effort in the game they played. and, and uh, uh, Taylor Decker and Chase Ferris making his first start great as a champion. And uh, everybody was very excited for him when I announced that to our team. Uh, our guys like him. Uh, he's, he's really invested for this for a long time, and uh, he's earned that. Zeke Elliott graded a champion, uh, 94 yards after contact. Uh, Curtis Samuel making his first start. At, uh, I don't know if he started. He, don't, he didn't start, but he graded a champion at wide receiver. And then player of the game was, the, was Braxton Miller. The uh, interesting thing about our offense is that um, – a guy like Braxton touched the ball four different ways. He uh, direct snap, played quarterback, got handed to him as a running back, got pitched to him as a uh, jet sweep guy, and then got thrown to him as a wide receiver. And that's what uh, that's our job as coaches, too. If you get a freak athlete or a guy that's uh, excellent in space, get it there. You can't just do that a wide receiver, you know, because what if the defense takes away that wide receiver? And so that's something that uh, we've been doing for years, and it's, it's – uh, it's great to be able to do that, a guy like Braxton. On defense, you got Tyquan Lewis, graded champion, first start champion. Adolphus Washington, Raquan McMillan, first start champion, and Gary Con Conley, uh, first start champion. Those are three of the four champions or first time starters. And Tyvis Powell was defensive player of the game, uh, played very well, and he's also a captain. On defense, or excuse me, on kicking, uh, the champions were Dante Booker, Curtis Samuel. Gary on Conley, those are three tackles inside the 20 on kickoff. Very good coverage. And Josh Perry uh, with the re re recovered the onside kick. The uh, special forces player of the game was Paris Campbell. Uh, obviously a redshirt guy that didn't play last year. He's all over the field. He had a tackle inside the 20 and the yard line on kickoff. And he's the one that uh, hit the punt returner for a no gain on, uh, on punt. So with that, I'll answer any questions for you. You just guard against everything, man. I mean, this is nuts. It's, I guess you have guards to guard the guards, right, or guard the player. But that's our, you know, we go nine strong, and uh, I hold every coach accountable, and you watch for indicators how they're slipping. And I said that in the summer. One is academics. Others is uh, work ethic on the practice field or weight room. And any social issues that you're dealing with, those are three indicators that we watch very closely. And uh, if I see it, the good thing is if you slip up, there's some pretty good players here. That means the next guy's pretty good too. So that is something we have to watch. But. Back row right, Clint. Your quarterback uh, situation of work in progress yeah. is, is Cardell the starter and JT's the backup now, or how does that No, work? you know, I, I, I don't know. You've got to watch. What? You said before, after the game, I don't, I don't know who's starting next Yeah. Uh, it's, it's delicate, man. Uh, I don't know. Um, I do know. I should. Uh, head coach saying, I don't know. Boy, that probably sounds bad. Uh, I know JT had one rush for 40 yards and one pass for a touchdown and was engaged, was leading the team, uh, knew uh, he wasn't going to take the first snap and talk to the team before they went out. Um, you know, there might be packages that I'm going to put in. We talked about that today with the quarterbacks, with maybe JT. So I, I don't know. It's, uh, they both have to be on call and ready to go. And I've never been in a situation like that, that uh, they're both pulling for each other. It's the damnest thing I've ever seen.
It's really cool to see that. Front row right, Austin. Does it seem strange at all to you that what Cardale has accomplished in four games, that he's not actually started for Ohio State in Ohio Stadium? Does it seem odd to you? Yeah, I didn't realize that until you just said that. That's real odd. I guess I, mean, I don't know if you want me to comment. That is odd. Is that a question or a statement? I don't know. Maybe it's, it's both. Um, yes. When you, when you reference those packages, do you feel like for the most part what you did with the quarterbacks on Monday is a blueprint that you are going to continue to use? I really don't know, Austin. I, you know, a lot of it depends on, you know, you know the good thing is we – we expect the expectations in the classroom now, and you know you, you screw around, man. Be careful. And um, so I, I don't want to jump too far ahead. You know, well, let's go beat Hawaii. Whoever I think and we think and I think can drive us down to score a touchdown against. You know, I knew it was going to be uh, the the defense we saw was going to be a zero and a big dude's going to have to stand in there, and it worked. You know, a couple of times he had to go over the top of people, make a play, and and then there's other times where you know. Uh, JT's got incredible skill too, so just we're trying to win a game, you know, just trying to score and win a game. Front row middle, Dave. When did you let the quarterbacks know, Coach? Did start with oh, well, Jerry was telling me that Cardell said, so I got to speak clearer, I guess. When I said, you're in. Uh, uh, probably two or three days before that Cardell was going to take the first snap. In this day and age, are you pleasantly surprised that that did not leak out? Does that say a lot about kind of the yeah about the tightness of the group and yeah. and uh, and maybe Cardell didn't hear me from what he said I didn't even talk to Cardell about it and so yeah I, I like that one because there was a time when I first got here when someone sneezed in here it went out and I made it clear that there and that's you know just if there's anything going out and I've told you guys if your sources are in here you you got a guy fired and if your sources are in a player the kid's never going to play so I'd be careful on who your sources are. And uh, yeah, I think that stays within the team. Front row right, Tim. Urban, what is the biggest challenge with literally, I, is this your one full practice day? Uh, it's awful. Yeah, I didn't realize. When Gene and I talked about this last year, I just didn't even think about it. Today's a Wednesday, and uh, we were in just Buckeye gear, but we're going to go Thursday, and tomorrow's third downs. I, I can't believe it's Wednesday night. And. Um, so yeah, it's it's real difficult right now. Guys are still sore, banged up. That was a tough game, physical game too. That's what I was gonna say. I mean, sometimes you play East-West games. This wasn't that. This was a downhill, sledgehammer game, and our guys are beat up. So we got to be real smart here, how we go about our business. And, you know, I, I portrayed it as I was on some radio show today, and I portrayed it as the cavalry kind of coming over the hill. Though you got Joey Bosa coming back, you got three guys coming back. Does, does that kind of add to like people being on their toes or whatever I mean or having some fresh bodies available etc yeah. plus the way you played so many people the other night and stuff uh, what do you feel about the freshness of your team I guess going into this kind of thing I feel great I feel the fact that uh, on defensive end we have some depth now Jalen Holmes and uh, Sam Hubbard were honorable mention I don't know if I mentioned that they were honorable mention on defensive line for the way they played so we're you know Sam Hubbard and Jalen Holmes are honorable mention champions so that's uh, pretty good for first time uh, I think they're both redshirt freshmen, and that's now you're getting some depth. And he also played a lot of guys on the inside. So yeah, we're uh, and then skill, offensive skill. I mean, you you got some bodies now, some fast bodies. And, did, were y'all working on it, at least a little bit on Hawaii in any kind of sense? No. you know, at all. I mean, this no. literally is introduced to that. We couldn't. You know, I, th I thought about that. It's a little bit like when we played Alabama last year and said, let's go worry about Oregon because we play. You know, if we win, but no, because are we treated that one as there's no tomorrow? A Super Bowl type atmosphere. We wanted to all focus, all hands on deck for Virginia Tech, and I'm glad we did. Far left, Matt. Uh, dovetailing off of Tim, just um, for the coaching staff, what is what has this week been like? I mean, you got back Tuesday morning in terms of 4:30 in the morning. The and then we came in. Uh, we, we let them get a couple hours of sleep. We came back in, and the GAs had it all done. So that's what happens. You have interns and GAs, and you slap it up on the board. And so we come in and at least get a visual of what's going on. Then you just start watching film. And I had, you know, we had some decisions to make. Do we start jump right into Hawaii, or do we fix? Because there's a lot of errors we had against uh, Virginia Tech. And, and so the coaches made a cut up of Virginia Tech because you didn't have, only had, you know, also the four hour window. We appealed to the NCAA to let us meet with them yesterday and all that, and they said no. So those are all things probably before you schedule a Monday night game, we should ask those questions because we're, we're way behind. 
So you're just first take on uh, Hawaii and what you're going to see. Uh, oh, just it's, it's just stuff. You know, it's uh, it's one of those defenses. It's, it's completely different than what we faced. It's three four defense, and they it's called smoke blitzes. Uh, Indiana did it last year and it really hurt us. Um, some of the teams have hurt us badly with that. Uh, Navy, that's a Navy type defense, and it's it's just unique that you know something you need reps at, and we haven't had any. Front row left, Doug. Urban, I wanted to ask you about the uh, position battle that everyone in the country is talking about. Your kickers, where does it stand <laughs> with Willoughby and Nuremberg? We saw Jack out there for that game, but he missed the field goal. So it's open to the kicker, will, whoever kicks best tomorrow. Tomorrow's field goal day. Whoever kicks best will be the kicker. And they know that and a lot of pressure on them. And uh, Jack actually hit it pretty good and he just missed it. So uh, Sean will have a chance to earn it back. Disappointed right now in our kicking, obviously. Uh, that carries on from last year. We were not a very good field goal team, and uh, we have to get better. And in the punt return game with Jalen and Dontre back, where does that stand now? Yeah, uh, also Braxton, I'd, I'd like to get him. He's real close. I just didn't think that would be fair to put him in that environment back there. And Zeke's our best catcher, and he dropped one. But uh, Jalen and Dontre and uh, Marshawn Lattimore is really good, too. And uh, Jalen and Dontre. So I, I don't know who the starter is yet. That's still up in the air. Yeah, uh, right now it would be Braxton or Jalen. We'll start the game back there. Oh, you have Jalen now at wide receiver, not H back, or what player is he? He knows them all. He's a real smart player, and he needs to be an adaptable guy. And last question, far left, Lori. Coach, how much taller is your stack of DVDs than usual this week? And that their offensive coordinator last season somewhere else, their defensive coordinator last season somewhere else, their special teams coordinator last season somewhere else, their quarterback last full season. Was it a different school? How much? Yeah, I, I can't speak too much for our defense. That'd be a good question for Luke or Chris because I'm so involved with the offense right now. And that uh, we did, we watched, S I think it's SMU uh, because that's where their D coordinator came. But it was a very similar defense that they ran previous that he came there. So I think we got to handle what they're going to do. It's just we got to be able to block it. And, you, and here's the issue is that we only get so many games. That was, that was not a very long practice, 17, 18 periods because I can't. You go any longer, you're wearing them out after just playing two days ago. So how do we get those reps? That's going to be tough this week. And all four guys are on track to return from suspension this week? Yes. Yeah, they'll, uh, yeah. all four are ready to go.